welcome to Faith Alive. My name is Bishop Stephanie B. Riddle Green. I'm your host for today, and I'm here in the studio to talk about some things that interest the body of Christ. I'm Stephanie B. Riddle Green. I'm the pastor of the Joshua Baptist Cathedral in Huntington, New York. Our address is 376 Broadway, Huntington, New York, 11743. Our services are on Sundays at 11 o'clock and Wednesdays at 7 p.m. Please join us. I'm not going to stay long on all of my uh, plugs on today, but I wanted to shout out in our, uh, our in-studio guest today, Pastor Dawn Mixon. She is the executive pastor of the Mount Calvary Church of God in Huntington, New York. She's my special guest. Say hello to the people, Pastor. God bless you, everyone. So grateful to be online here with uh, Bishop Green. Looking forward to sharing some of uh, the insights of what we need to know about the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I'm grateful to be on with you on today. Thank you. Thank you so much for being my first guest for, awesome. for our very first pilot for our Faith Alive show. Well, we're, we're going to get right to it. We've been talking lately about a few things. And one of the subjects that I wanted to talk about on today is mentorship. I wanted to talk about uh, mentorship and pastoring and uh, leading and guiding and teaching young people. And I know that uh, both of us have the opportunity to have great mentors in our lives. Mm -hmm. uh, my mentor is Bishop Millicent Hunter of the Baptist Worship Center in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. And your mentor is? With Dr. James E. Bamadilly Sturdivant <laughs> out of uh, Faith United Ministries in Heightsville, uh, Maryland. Yes, he's such an anointed man of God. Yes, My God. Um, uh, Pastor Sturdivant has been mentoring for how long? Uh, over the last 20 years. 20 years plus. Mm -hmm. 20, years, 20 plus. years plus. I haven't had that anniversary yet. I've been being mentored since about 16 and a half years um, as of now. First, I want to ask you, how did you come about uh, obtaining Pastor Sturdivant as your mentor? Um, it just kind of uh, almost fell in my lap. I was going through a season in time where uh, things were very stressful for me. I mm -hmm. uh, really did not know where I wanted to go as far as ministry was concerned. And almost kind of threw my hands up. Mm -hmm. And here God sends a, God sent to me. Mm -hmm. And uh actually helped me push me back into the direction in where I was supposed to go and from then on um, he just kind of tooled me and, and, and gave me uh, toolage in where ministry is supposed to go mm -hmm. and you know I had to get through some hurdles and different things like that but God kind of turned things all the way around in my favor so yeah. um, I'm the better for it so Amen. I'm grateful to God for it. Amen. I'm, I'm going to share my testimony. I was walking down the hall of a hotel at the ba uh, during the National Baptist Convention. And uh, I was a female pastor, first, uh, first female pastor here in this island, elected. And I was a little bit by myself and didn't know what to do, where to go, who to talk to. And I was getting advice from a lot of the gentlemen pastors. Okay. Um, but I needed a woman. And so I was at the uh, convention and happened to see Bishop Hunter, who I had been following, coming down the hall. And I introduced myself to her. And she looked at my name tag. She saw us, us female pastors. We're in here, you know. And I, um, she was walking away. The Spirit of the Lord said to me, don't let her leave your life. Mm -hmm. And I turned around and I said, I need help. I need help. Amen. Wow. And so I, I wanted to segue uh, this way because a lot of times... Um, and here's what you and I have been talking about and why I wanted to bring it to the forefront. A lot of times uh, in the, the new, this 21st century, we have people who, are, ha, uh, who, who, have, who have mentors, pastors, mothers, fathers, sisters, brothers, right. so forth and so mm -hmm. on. But I'm learning that in this day and age, it's starting to become intermingled. Right. Um, uh, but we, we get mentors because we need help. Right. We need help. Not to say that we don't have a mother, not to say that we don't have a father, but we need help. Amen. All right. Mm -hmm. And so you and I have talked about this. You said something to me for, before it was an ETA. That, that, that I took the metaphor for it. Mm -hmm. The ETA. Explain what the ETA is. Um, well, I, I really believe that um, as mentors, um, they are there to advise us. Um, they are experienced advisors um, that can be trusted. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we, when we look at that, um, they are there for a purpose and season in our lives. And one thing I did share with you before concerning, um, my mentor, mm -hmm. anytime things are about to take place because of connection, mm -hmm. you have to realize who you're connected to. And it's Absolutely. very important who you know, who you're connected to Absolutely. because whatever flows through them also flows through to you Towards and you. so when it does that what happens is is that um, anytime that something happens in his ministry mm -hmm. or anything like that whether it good be good bad or indifferent mm -hmm. um, I find myself in the place where 
um, he says, listen, this is getting ready to come down the pipe. Right. And right. it doesn't may not happen tomorrow or right. that year, or, but I look out for it. It's mm -hmm. almost like a heads up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I think we need that in the body mm -hmm. of Christ. We really need somebody to kind of give us um, what we are, are going to face mm -hmm. and what's going to, what we're going to encounter is no different than um, when we are dealing with those who are old, the older generation tries to let us know, yeah. listen, you're going to face this, yeah. you're going to go through this, yeah. but we as as people have to understand, we have to learn how to listen. Mm -hmm. Not only listen, but be aware of what was going to uh, come down the pipe. You yeah. know, don't yeah. think that everything that you've been happens, warned, that you've, you, been you've been warned, right. you've been warned, that you, you, you know everything. Right. That's the, right. the generation I see today yeah. is that I know everything. I got this. Yeah. And we are in a place where people want to be self-learned. That's the word you used before, self-learned. Mm -hmm. Now you said experienced, uh, uh, trusted advisors. That's right. why I called it the ETA, right. right? And so when Bishop Hunter came into my life, um, I was grateful for, for her because she had been where I was going. And right. so that, that coincides with what you just said. You know, some things are coming up the pike. Look out for it. I'm forewarning you. I'm mm -hmm. giving you information of how it's going to be. Um, we have this issue now. Um, and what I'm to, I want to do with this broadcast is pretty much bring to the table certain things uh, to help iron out some of the wrinkles, right. you know, uh, within ministry, within leadership more than anything. Because leadership can rock the church. It can grow the church. It can, it can hinder the church. And I just want to help lead, not, the, not just the leader, but leadership within churches. And oftentimes when we have leaders um, within our church, we have those who are seeking. You said self-learn. They're seeking out other ways and venues. Mm -hmm. We can Google anything. Right. We can Google absolutely anything right. nowadays. Google anything, and we think that we have it, but what we don't know is the people who put that information onto the right. uh, internet may not be godly people, yeah. may not be God-fearing people. And then we bring that to the table, and we want to tell even the leaders that this is the route that we're taking. Mm -hmm. So um, what, I wanted to, what I wanted to bring to the forefront on today more so, or in addition to, was that we have... Uh, mentors. Right. What is the position of the mentor? Because sometimes, and here's my experience, okay. sometimes the mentor starts out as an experienced trusted advisor right. and then starts calling the mentee mm -hmm. uh, daughter, mm -hmm. son, and then the mentee starts calling the mentor mom, dad, pop, or what have you, and then it begins to, to convolute. Okay. This is my opinion. Mm -hmm. convolute the relationship between the pastor and that mentee with the mentor okay. in the, as, the, as the go-between. You follow what mm -hmm. I'm saying? Um, so, so, so what exactly should the position of the mentor be? Um, I feel the mentor should uh, be in a place where I'm in a place where I'm always learning, mm -hmm. um, where I'm in a place where um, I'm able to share with one another what God is getting ready to do as a spiritual mm -hmm. thing. And I know we have those who say, oh, well, this is my spiritual mother, spiritual right. father. Right. But how many spiritual mothers and fathers are you going to have? How many do you I, need? I only have one parent. <laughs> right. I have two parents. I have right. a mother and a father in, right. in the natural. And, you know, when you have so many different voices mm -hmm. speaking to you, mm -hmm. and you're, you you need to know what direction you're going in. Mm -hmm. And so when I look at my mentor, mm -hmm. he, he guides me spiritually in a lot of areas of my mm -hmm. life when it comes to my ministry. Um, pastoring, my mother, uh, who is my senior pastor, right. she kind of guides me in a lot of ways of how to uh, be in a place as a pastor. Right. Um, right. And even though I'm an executive pastor and I have worn the shoes of a senior pastor every now and then, there is a difference. There's a difference. There's a big difference. And Absolutely. so when we realize that we don't really know what we're going to encounter, even as a senior pastor and leadership and different things until you actually step in it. Mm -hmm. And those uh, um, guidance that I receive from my mentor mm -hmm. helps me in Absolutely. pastoring. Absolutely. Um, but um, the spiritual food that I'm getting from my leader mm -hmm. um, is what is nourishing me right. um, to, to do a lot of uh, things. I don't, I kind of, they're kind of separate for me mm -hmm. um, because that's um, the key word. Yeah, it's that's the key word. That and that's what I was trying to bring um, out is that there has to be a separation. Okay. What happens is that be, is that they become intermingled. And a lot of pastors like yourself and a lot of pastors, our colleagues, mm -hmm. we 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 kind of flinch mm -hmm. when we hear that our children are growing up and now they want to obtain a mentor. At first, right. days ago, years ago, it was no problem right. because it takes a village. Right. 
It takes a village because sometimes we may not be well versed and equipped in what you're actually going through. Mm -hmm. Amen. And so it takes a village. And nowadays you see a lot of leaders flinching. I've had pastors say to me, and this is why I brought this subject to the table. Mm -hmm. I don't want my people to have a mentor. And I say, then your people suffer. Your people suffer okay. because there's going to there's going to definitely be a lack of knowledge because every good pastor, every good leader needs some other people helping them to 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 protect their children. Mm -hmm. But it's like it's like growing up when we were younger, the neighbors told us what to do. Right. The neighbors told us, I'll tell hey, your mother. Absolutely. We knew who our mother was. Right. We knew our mother was, but we would also go to the neighbor while waiting for that cup of sugar or that mm -hmm. extra egg, and they say, "I saw you walking up the street with so and so the other right. day," and we would take that advice and, mm -hmm. and think on it. You know, Pastor, you've been an, an awesome, awesome, awesome um, guest on today. I, I couldn't think of anybody better to start uh, start this uh, this uh, Faith Alive broadcast Alive. off with, and we look to bring a whole lot of great subjects to the table. I know I'm going to have you back. All right. I have to have you back Love to. because you are a wealth of knowledge to the body of Christ. Again, my name is Bishop Stephanie B. Riddle Green. This is Pastor Dawn, Dawn Mixon. Mixon. Amen. Visit her church, Mount Please Calvary come. Holy Church uh, in Huntington, New York. Give them the address, Pastor. Give them the address we and your times and schedules. We are 1520 New York Avenue, Huntington Station. We do start our service at 1030 a.m. Um, we do have our Bible study on Wednesday night at 7.30 p.m. Uh, if you're in the area and want a word from the Lord, come and see us. We are looking uh, for people to come, and we're embracing po people in love. Uh, we're uh, a good church. Not a perfect church, but we are a good church, and we love the people of God. Amen. And I'm Bishop Stephanie B. Riddle Green, Joshua Baptist Cathedral, 376 Huntington, uh, 376 Broadway, Greenlawn, Huntington, New York, 11743. If you don't go to her church in Huntington, come to my church in Huntington. Okay. You have two of the most powerful pastors in all of Huntington Amen. sitting at this venue right now. And she and I together, we're taking Huntington by force. We're putting a revival in Huntington and on Long Island. Again, I'm Bishop Stephanie B. Riddle Green. Please feel free to reach out to us and join our broadcast again. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for so much for, for having me sit here and ask you all of these great questions. Amen. And I'm grateful. Let's pray really quick. Father, we thank you now yes, for the Lord. listeners, for those who hear, heard today, and for those that we attempted to impact. We hope that we've made a difference in the life of someone. Now, God bless uh, Pastor Dawn Mixon and her ministry. Bless the Joshua Baptist yes, Cathedral Lord. as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Jesus.